Well, John, I'm so excited to spend some time with you. This is going to be so much fun because uh, there's just so much that we have uh, in common, and we've had so much fun here just hanging out over the last uh, handful of months, traveling together, and I'm so excited to have you on the show. So welcome to the Lifestyle Investor. It's great to be here. Um, really, it's been great getting to know you and look forward to kind of chatting and helping out your audience. I love it. Well, there's a lot of expertise and wisdom that you have in that brain of yours, and I want to extrapolate as much of it as I can. I do have to mention, first and foremost, that I love your Dunder Mifflin shirt. Uh, you have the best shirts. You have like the funniest attire. Uh, even just some of the things that you do with themes in your office and, and the things that you do to build culture in your organization are incredible. So I just have to give you props. We, hey, well, honestly, I mean, the, the office, it's like, it's hilarious. A lot of people like it here. I mean, we, we just like having, especially in this world that we're in today with the, you know, the pandemic going on and different things. It's like, I think actually getting the people to smile around you and to enjoy being around you, I think it's key. So even if it's just, you walk into a meeting and somebody's expecting a suit and you have a dunder mifflin like it's funny as it is i'm my banker i met with him last week with this shirt and he like was like that's hilarious and he's sitting there in a suit and it just immediately breaks the ice so i strongly recommend that i think most people just want to be comfortable around you so if you ever have an opportunity to dress or or say or, or act a certain way to make someone comfortable you do it these days well, you're the master of that. I mean, you really are. You are hysterical. I find myself laughing more than anything, sometimes to the point of tears, because we share the same sense of humor. And I just love all the antics that you're up to. I love that you're a practical joke guy. I mean, some of the practical jokes that you have pulled on your partner, John Rampton, and that vice versa, he's pulled on you are just, I mean, these are world class antics that you guys do and and practical jokes so i, I gotta give it up man <laughs> thanks thanks i I'm, I'm happy to give you examples but that's a it, it's, again it's about breaking the ice and getting people just to laugh and um and ultimately uh, i think that once you get past all the bs ice and the uncomfortableness i think you can have a real relationship and do some great things together so yeah Give us a good one. Give us a good practical joke. One that is, you know, PG or PG 13. There are definitely some that you do that are hysterical. <laughs> uh, anything come to mind? I mean, like there's a lot of things you can do just to meth. Like, like this is just what I did the other, the other day or what I was going to do. We just built a big complex here and to mess with one of our tenants, we put one of those remote, uh, remote um, uh, kind of like birds that that hit against the wall and we have a remote so every time they go over we like we go over there or we're walking by we hit the remote and it starts to mess with it and he can't figure out where this knocking noise is coming from and he just <laughs> keeps on being like oh my god like this damn knocking noise we come over like where is it and it's never on because we have the remote to it so like <laughs> it's one of those things where that's my like pg version of uh, you know what we can do but like I said, is I, I think that when you when you mess with people and you just have a good time, especially in a partnership, because I think that a partnership is, is similar to a marriage for me. And especially Brampton and I invest in a lot of things together. And I think that, you know, messing with each other where we and I'll get his wife and like that, like it, it's actually helped my relationship with his wife, because like I'll joke around with her on something I've got planned to mess with him about. And it helps us get a connection because like he's always messing with her and then I team up and it's kind of fun. So. I would just say that it, it's a way to, to bring uh, anything I do is to bring people together. And so, you know, as goofy as it sometimes seem, seems, it, it, there's some strategy behind it. I love it. Well, it's so great. And, and both of you guys are awesome. You, you remind me of, uh, I mean, both of you guys, your names are John. So I love calling you the Johns, just like from Office Space, the Bobs. Uh, <laughs> I just love it. Uh, I was describing you to someone else. And then I had another group of people that, um, that I had recently connected you with that was talking about the Johns. So it, it just rolls off the tongue so well. Um, so I think it'd be fun to talk about how we first met because we're part of a group. I've interviewed a, a few other people from um, our selfless givers group, but I'd love for you to share some, uh, I guess, some context on what our group is and what our group's about, because I think you exemplify selfless giving. And I think that you really show up for other people in times of need and go by far the extra mile. So how would you describe our group and, and kind of the, the, the genesis of what we are and what we do? Yeah, I mean, that was started initially when <laughs> Rulin and I were in a hot tub together with um, 
it was at Eric Huberman's place uh, after an event. And that sounds really weird, but once again, you know, whatever, trust and whatever. But like we were talking about how we're so driven by helping others and how we get more excited. And Jonathan Kaiser was kind of in this conversation as well. And, I, and we talked about there's different ways to make money and to work, do business with each other. And, and we, I've come to the conclusion that if you really work hard, you're smart and you keep at it, keep learning, keep be willing to make yourself better, you're going to make money. And then it goes to how do you make money? Uh, that's that next step is like, you know, I could be a drug dealer because I know I, I could be a fantastic drug dealer, but that's not the way I want to make money. Uh, it's And so it, for me, I, I we were joking around about like, you know, if we can create networks of just true helpfulness and selfless giving where you're like, you guys are making money and looking out for each other, but it's not like tallying. And that's what I love about it. It's like, when I help you, Justin, it's because I care, love you, I want you to do well. And it's the way that we want to make money together is that like building you up and, a- and advocating for you, but also you deserve it. So I think that like for us, the group is about identifying people that deserve recognition, that actually are trustworthy people, do what they say, and then creating this mentality and of selfless giving, which I think I, I could tie this to also my marriage is that when I stopped keeping score with my wife, we had a better wedding or marriage. We basically said, I'm giving and I want you to be happy. And I think that we've kind of applied that marriage, that learn, what I learned in marriage to business partnership to groups I'm a part of. So that's why I get excited about that group and surrounding myself with those types of people, because then it's not a scorecard. It's just, hey, when we can help, we're going to, we're going to look out for each other. And it's proven to uh, create a lot of opportunities for us in a way where it's not just money, but it's fun and it's uh, with with good people. Yeah, I love that. And you built this development in Columbia, Missouri, that is incredible. And we were the lucky recipients of your your generous offer to stay there in a time of need for my family, where uh, my wife's uh, father ended up having a stroke, was in a facility there. And you opened up your home uh, with open arms. And this facility that you built is incredible. So you've got, so side note, you're an entrepreneur, you're an investor, you're an ideas guy, uh, you're an expert in a lot of different places. And we're going to dive into all this, but you have built this community where you have office space for you. And some of your friends are in this office space. You're one of the guys from your investment group. uh, That's such a cool investment group there in Columbia. Uh, he's in one of the office spaces and then you've got housing there that you can put up your friends when they're in town. And there are just so many like toys and things, your neighborhood's gorgeous. Um, what gave you the idea to want to do this? And I, I know that no one else probably could have pulled this off because you're Mr. Relationship. So anyone else who tried building this development outside of a neighborhood could have never gotten this pass, but you know everyone and you're on great terms with people and you were able to share with the community the value of having this and having a coffee shop right there as part of the uh, the uh, development and just so many cool things, so many cool perks. Yeah, and what, it, what I, like you mentioned, like vision is, uh, I, I try and think of a vision of what's optimal. Like in a perfect world, what is Kate? So in my, in a dream, it was basically like, you know, Hey, if I, if I have a dream situation, I am, you know, have a community where I live with people that I care about, look out for our kids are, you know, uh, friends and we, you know, I can, they can go over like right now, actually it's fun, fun, like my kids were just with me. They're at a neighbor's that's like a, a block down that I trust. They're jumping on this trampoline. Um, so it was like, Hey, there's an optimal community feel to it then and then there's once again doing everything you can to give and so like i did a lot of things like i paid for the fountains uh, built the kind of the cooking area down at the pool uh did things where it wasn't like i was keeping score it was like i'm trying to give to create to this community then others started doing it as well and we had this kind of giving community where people were living and they're like donating things to the community making things stocking the the lake here doing different things and, and so that started then this development happened where it was, it was in, in reality just saying, hey, in a perfect world, we would have an office here. We would um, have space for companies we want to support. Like Helium is a, a, woman, a woman leadership team. It's five, five six women. Uh, they're, they're trying to uh, change mental health through uh, virtual uh, reality um, and gaming. And they're next to us and we support them where, where we try and get the, them resources. Joe from Traxia, who you met, um, you know, fast growing company we want to support. 
uh, the Camacho Coffee is, a, is somebody we want to support. So in reality, this, and then when we looked at the residential, it was like, I want a place where my parents, where friends like Justin or, you know, others can, and when, when someone needs us, we just have a place for them. Um, you know, even we, I built a bomb shelter below us. There's a bomb shelter just in case for some of the people who have slabs here, they know that if they get in a jam, they have a code and they can go down and they have their own bomb shelter. Cause when they were building all those slabs, I told them I was concerned that they wouldn't, if we had a tornado, where would they go? And so built that for them. And so I think that ultimately when you have a vision of what's optimal, you did, it, it took me five years to get here, but you have to say, okay, here's optimal. Is this in my grasp? Can I do this? And then we did it through kind of, you know, this kind of giving and getting the right people on board. And then we had a lot of full, full support. We were one of the only developments to have a hundred percent uh, neighborhood support, planning and zoning support and city council support kind of because people like this idea and the, the kind of people that were involved. That's cool. You know, I, I love your story because you've done things differently than most. Most people work really hard. They develop a business, they figure out, you know, or they just grow and, you know, move up the corporate ladder. They, they work hard and make money. And then at a certain point, they enjoy the fruits of their labor. And often they will work countless hours and do all these things and probably not reward themselves as much as they should. And eventually someday they'll live this really cool lifestyle. You conversely have built this incredible lifestyle all at the same time. So you're one of the unique people that I feel like you have been focused on lifestyle and quality of life and uh, providing for your family and doing cool things. And, and we've talked about this, having experiences for a lifetime and you haven't waited until you've had all this success. You've done it every step of the way. And surprise, surprise, you're an incredibly successful guy that, you know, you don't have to work. You've got uh, a lot of businesses. You've got a lot of value in these. You've done very well investing. And in fact, we'll dive into some of this and some of the companies that you own. Um, but I just love that you have taken lifestyle seriously from day one. I I'd love to hear you speak about that. Yeah. And that's why like I connected with your book a lot just because, and I don't want to say like, I think I still learned a lot from your book uh, uh, because, but like what was nice about it is that I think that I've naturally done some of the things that you um, in deals, like even when I was 19 uh, and I was buying real estate for the first time, I was looking for, you know, the, the deals that nobody, the invisible deal. I was looking for, you know, kind of the things that were in your book um, it's, it's like, I would say, uh, one of the reasons why I was able to have the capital was when I was investing in real estate early, I, I looked for the income multiplier. I looked for, um, the invisible deal. I looked for a uh, strict deal structure. And, uh, there's a lot of those things that factored in and it put me in a situation where, um, you know, I was a, a millionaire by the time I was out of college. And so when you look at that, it was like, okay, well, it's a lot easier when you're a 23, you know, 24 year old and you have capital there. And, and I haven't, I'm, I've had more of an investment strategy like Warren Buffett. So I, I'm not like an overnight, you know, you do, and similar to you, it's like, you didn't do one deal and like, oh, by the way, I'm a billionaire. I, I think that, you know, you do deals, you know, you do them smart, you kind of, um, and that's what I've done over time. And now there's been kind of compounding where there, yeah, there's a lot going on and we're very well diversified. It's like, we have you know, real estate, we have a media firm, we have, uh, you know, scheduling, uh, you know, companies with technology, we have, um, uh, you know, this development uh, here and, and other things. So we've naturally become diverse. Um, and also the deals have been structured the right way. They've been healthy. And, um, you know, when you combine those, it, it's, it's pretty great. Um, but, you know, it took time and it took, you know, focus and it took, um, you know, kind of that vision of saying, hey, here's where we can get and we're just going to work our way towards it. Yeah, I love how you just casually brushed over the fact that uh, you became a millionaire shortly after college. I, I just love the fact that that is possible, that people can do that. And you, you got into you know buying real estate while you were in college. You're 19 years old, building a portfolio and eventually selling that portfolio and rolling into more real estate. Um, and then I also want to give you major props because the deal that you negotiated for this development was incredible. And I don't know if you're comfortable sharing any of the details, but I think you did a masterful job uh, of figuring out how to fund it and build it and do everything in a very safe and secure manner. Yeah, I mean, and we were and we pulled our money out of the uh, already now. And so what's nice about the kind of result of it is that 
you know, it cash flows 30 to 40 K a month. I actually know a little more about 40 K a month. Um, and we pulled our cash out. And so, and this is, you know, a, a two year deal. So this is, this is at Rampton always jokes around. He goes, uh, when we went over the numbers, he goes, Donald would be so proud of you right now. And we would kind of laugh about it. He goes, is that a Justin Donald deal? Um, and I was like, yeah, I was like, actually, I think I told Donald and he was pretty, he was pretty excited about it. So, you know, it's a good, but it's more like what we did. So here's where our invisible, or uh, here's where our kind of income multiplier or, or like uh, we, we basically use a residential contractor to do a commercial build, which is unheard of. Um, but I did have a great relationship with this guy, contractor. Now it was very stressful because I had to pretty much GC it with him. Uh, but when you do a residential contractor on a commercial deal, you can use residential subs and we only use commercial subs when we needed to on engineering and things like that. And we did. And so from a standpoint of something, this would have cost us double to do steel building, commercial, all the, those things. And so we were able to do that. In addition, we had um, the way we structured uh, things with the loan. We had a very strong, I mean, very low interest rate of 2% interest uh, for a construction loan. It extended. We had a great relationship. We help the bank out a lot. So I would say strongly get a great relationship with your bank because now granted, and we've talked about even going away from banking. I know that we do whole life insurance and I'm looking into those options, but I'm just telling you for this one, this is how I structured it. Um, but we looked at that and we were like, okay, well, the, we had such a good relationship with the president of the bank. He was a huge advocate uh, for us. Um, the bank was uh, Providence Bank. It's now First Mid. I, actually, the president was here yesterday kind of looking at this and was just so happy that they were a part of it. So, But I, I, part of that was not I just went to a bank. I mean, we had a relationship with him for years. He knew us. He knew our character, knew like how we do business, knew that I would like also just a reputation of like, if you ask me how much this wall costs, I could tell you. Like I could legitimately be like the studs were this at this time, this time. So we have a reputation for actually being very organized and structured. And that's another thing as an investor, when you have your shit together, people want to deal with you. When you don't have your shit together, people don't want to deal with there. You know, it's very, it's very straightforward. It's, it's not rocket science. So the bank kind of got our backs because they knew they were like, Hey, this, you know, we've known Hall for a while. He's done different, you know, things with him. And he's always kept his word. Like as funny as this is, this came up in one of the council meetings where I was one of my past deals um, when I was a kid, pretty much 24, 25, the head of planning and zoning at the time said, we don't want to allow you to do this because it's a slippery slope. And if you if you do it, you're going to do it next year and you're just going to say the same damn shit and you're going to keep doing it and on this house, this house, this house. And this whole subdivision is going to be rezoned the way that these two properties are. And I said, you have my word. I will not do it. And I will also put a clause and make sure that there's, if there's a deed restriction. He goes, why would you do that? Because that will prevent you in the future. There's no way you'll do that. I go, well, I'll do it because I'm giving you my word. And so I think that um, when that came up on this deal, there was something that came up with setting a precedent. The, the planning and zoning just turned to the council was like, if Paul's involved, yeah, you can completely trust him. Legitimately, when he was a 25 year old kid, he kept his word with us. And I remember it to this day, you know, uh, you know, this, he, I, he, he was surprised because also I got an offer the next year and he was aware of this for a lot of money to sell the property next to me with the zoning and they said if you help me get in i said hey i give the head of pnz my word uh you know my planning that, I'm, that i want to do that and he's like well i'll pay you this and i was like no so that just is a reminder of character and creating this reputation or relationship because that allowed us to do a lot of things here because we had really good support from planning they were flexible with dealing with us we were able to get away with doing some things that would have cost us a ton more money um and so when you look at the combination i'd summarize it as this and also this is a neighborhood where we had developed rapport where i had spent a lot of time helping neighbors out doing different things so the neighborhood support allowed us to really get a lot of momentum where we could get by and uh from the kind of the, the way the deal was structured and the bank was so happy about it they were very uh compliment or they're very very easy to deal with with the construction interest extended it six to twelve or it was like eight or ten months actually even beyond so we were just able to really save a lot of money on interest there and then uh, immediately we had planned on selling to the villas, pulling out the cash from those villas, then being able to use those villas to um, pay ourselves back. And now we own uh, two villas uh, in 20, um, oh, 20, uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, 22,000 worth of office space. And all of our money's out and it's purely cash flow. And so that's kind of the, the story. So hopefully, I try to be as transparent. You told me to be transparent. That's about as real as you get. I love it. It is so real. Uh, I mean, number one, you talked about the importance of, of relationships and specifically having a lender and building a relationship there. And I couldn't agree with you more. Number two, you can't argue with the results. 
Uh, and the results are in two years, you pulled all your money out of the deal and you have $40,000 a month approximately in cash flow. That's incredible. And you own all this space and you were able to do it with low interest loans. And you were able to just figure out a way to kind of get in and get out of this deal to de-risk the deal. It was an invisible deal. I mean, there's just so many uh, principles and, and commandments inside the Ted and commandments that were used that your intuition kind of led you to. And I, I love that. And I also don't want to overshadow the fact that um, you jumped in as GC when you needed to, general contractor. You rolled up, and I personally have seen this with my own eyes. You are willing to roll up your <laughs> sleeves, get dirty, do the work you need to do, teach people how they need to do it, but literally jump in and do it yourself so that people understand. Or if something's going on and there's no one there, you'll jump in and you'll run it. And I think that those are very important points of a successful entrepreneur. Well, there's a balance there. So like from a standpoint of um, you, two things that I value time. And I think that like for years, a lot of times you'll be like, hey, man, you, you should probably pay to have that done because your time is valuable, John. Why would you be fixing an air conditioner, you know, when you can pay somebody to do that, to do that? So I think those are valid things that friends, uh, you know, like smart people like you will challenge me on. And in, in addition, I own calendar.com. So it's like I'm tracking my time and, and scheduling and doing a lot of things where, you know, time matters. But I think there's the other thing is the type of human and leader and entrepreneur I want to be is I want the people around me to know that I am never above them to do a job. I will take trash out. I will clean floors. I will fix ACs because I think that if the leader does that in a company, because we got, I mean, in this office, we have um, almost 20, well, maybe 20 three or 24 people, I want them to see that because I want them to be that way. When their intern needs them to, to do something and to you know fix something for them, help them move something. And so that's a part of the culture that I want to create as an entrepreneur in the business. And so that's why you see that where I, I love the idea when a leader, and I, and I learned this from people like the Sam Waltons of the world who I've respected, where they will go and grocery, you know, grocery, uh, or do bags grocery themselves. And, um, so I think that's a that's a line I want to, you know, I want to be cautious with my time, but I also want people around me to know that I'm never above them and I'll always do any job because then I send that sends the message to them is that then you you should do the same thing. If something's needed and it's to help the business at the right time at the right moment, I want you to be able to do that. And that's kind of what I did. I mean, our contractor, he's a very good friend, he got overwhelmed and legitimately couldn't handle a lot of the things he was doing. And so I stepped in and was like, hey, like, you know, this is what you sometimes need to do, even though my time probably could be better elsewhere on, you know, something else. At this time, I want to show you this is what you need. Cause, and at the time, it, it was what was best for my time because we needed to get this deal done in the right way. And, and it did. And it was exhausting, but it was, it was definitely worth it, as you can tell, kind of from how the numbers worked. Yeah, it paid off. I, I think it was a brilliant use of your time uh, because it was short lived. This is something, this is more like one time moments of grinding and getting your hands dirty for a long-term residual payout, which is a smart way to allocate your time. Now you mentioned calendar.com. I want to talk about this because this is a really cool tech play. This is a, mm -hmm. a software company that you guys uh, invested in and are helping to kind of run this company with your expertise and you've partnered in, in many different ways. So uh, talk to us about the I guess the reason you decided to uh, kind of create an, a partnership with this company, and, and for those that are unfamiliar with calendar.com, it'd be like Calendly. You know, Calendly would be the, the number one competitor to calendar.com. So why did you want to get in this space? By the way, I love the space, but why did you want to get into it? And, and what do you see for the future of, you know, software and this specific software? Yeah, I mean, well, when you look at Calendly, I mean, they just got valued at a 40 revenue multiple. So they at $3 billion off their raise. And so there's definitely, and if you look, Zapier got valued at 5 billion, which is in the productivity space. Uh, right now, this kind of area is very hot because people want to make their lives better, their teams better. Uh, you know, with the pandemic, remote work and actually trusting employees, but still giving them, the, but giving them the tools to be more effective and productive. And so I like the space. I think it's only going to grow. I think the only reason why when we went into calendar, when Ramp and I looked at it, 
is I had just exited and I was trying to figure out ways to be more self-aware how I spend my time. Cause like Cali and I don't want to bash them. I, they actually, um, Rampton has a really good relationship with their founder and it's a good product and a good, you know, good company, but we like the scheduling aspect, which, you know, for us, we have that scheduling aspect, but we wanted a little more. And so I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs find, or when you're an investor, you're like, Oh, I like Calendly, but I wish they did this, this, and this. And so that's kind of what we did is we looked at that and we're like, man, we did it. We were able to access the domain or get uh, the domain, which was a very tough one to get. Um, obviously it's spelled right. It's not like a tricky one. And so like for us, um, it was kind of a thing where we, we ourselves were wanted to invest in something that was going to help people with manager time. Cause when you look at like the most important asset that we have, you could, I mean, it's, it's our time. And so we wanted to get a company there. And so that's why like we have the scheduling down uh, where, you know, it's, it's doing scheduling. Well, our next kind of area is analytics and uh, helping teams and people how to understand their calendar. It's also a unified calendar. So that was something that drove me nuts where like Calendly and some of the other tools, like just would, I would just have one calendar, not, or you're just using it on like a Gmail. Um, my wife was on Apple. I was on uh, uh, Google. Ramped was on like Outlook. So it's like I needed a unified calendar because like my wife would put like my daughter's, um, you know, ballet or uh, it was dance um, thing. And I almost missed it because uh, it was on this calendar, which wasn't on this calendar. And so now with the kind of a unified way, um, like that's why I kind of like it. So we invested in that and um, we've got it to a point where now it is growing in revenue and it's doing well. At first we focused on free users, that model, and we were getting like three, 400 users a day. So we got there last October was doing well. Then now we're focused on revenue. And then we're to that point where we're, we're focused on revenue growth right now. And then we'll raise and, and do something big. So that's kind of where we're at. That's awesome. And you guys are build, building in some functionality there that doesn't exist in these other platforms and this other software for scheduling time and, uh, you know, really keeping a calendar. So I love that. I love what you're building. We've talked in depth uh, about, you know, just some of the specifics even that I look for and, and some of the things that you're building, I think are incredible. So well done. Um, I know there are other companies that you've invested in as well. And before we get into like your main expertise, uh, are, are there any others that you'd like to discuss ones that you're excited about or proud of, uh, and, and no pressure if you don't want to share any, or if you need to keep some confidential, which, uh, I know is, uh, you know, a part of some of your deals, but, uh, let sure. me know. Yeah. I mean, if it's always just stuff with me, I'll share it with you guys, anything like I, I want to help people. Um, I'm just trying to think is like what other, if other people want to like me, but like, I, I can just tell you like some of the things we're involved in that we do, we're, we're excited. Then I can dive into like relevance and expertise. So I can give like, you know, helpful tips and, and be uh, educational. And, but like uh, we're, we're involved in like Gab Wireless is a good example of a company I love to death. Like it's a kid's phone that basically like I hate the idea of my my daughter having an iPhone at the age of seven or eight nine ten I don't care even 18 like legitimately and just like I, I mean I, I'm on my iPhone all the time so I can't judge it but like my kids I want them to go out and play I want them to play chess like we do every night you know as, as you do with your daughter uh, and so I like that because it's the phone that a kid can have early that doesn't have all the crap that can ruin a kid's brain it, it you know it has uh, picture uh, it, you can take pictures it has where you can like um, call your parents and, and it gives them that feel of I have a phone. So I, I have a uh, responsibility, but it's not like all this stuff that can actually be, you know, worrisome. So I like that um, a ton. Um, that's one we're uh, involved in. Um, and, and I like appointment.com, which is in the space with calendar. Uh, that's one we're investing in, which I'm exci uh, pretty excited about. We buy a lot of media properties, which I don't disclose as much because there's other people involved in that, but we buy a lot of media properties. That, and like, just so you understand that model is we look for ones that like legitimately used to be worth multi-millions and their models just don't work because ad revenue and other sponsored content, it went down. So they had two, 300 employees. Well, when those employees were fired, it's uh, it's like, it's that brand still has value. So we'll go in and we'll, we'll like, I never want to go in and like do the Richard Gere and Pretty Woman and just destroy a company and like piece it out. That's not my style. It, my style is more like, oh crap, this company just took, you know, fired all their employees, but there's still some value here. What, what can we do to build it up? And that's kind of what we do in media, um, kind of with certain medium properties. But the one that I'm probably most excited, which we use kind of where the expertise is, is relevance.com where um, that's an area, that's a company that we, uh, we acquired the domain relevance.com, which it was a publication, 
we had a previous uh, company called Adigy uh, that we advised, um, which uh, they were do they used to be in kind of the SEO space. Um, and what kind of happened is that we found this like uh, the direction that I kind of with my expertise and like and I even forgot to explain this, but I also had an exit with a company called Influence and Co, which uh, uh, Kelsey Meyer now runs, which um, I exited that in 2018. That uh, we grew that from 2012 to 2018 or 2011 to 2018 to be the largest creator and distributor of expert content and media. So if you're reading articles in major media, there was a really good chance you were coming across uh, something that a client had hired us to basically write and create content and then distribute it to these places. So we took that background and then you know a couple of years later. Um, after we got calendar going gap, some of these things going, we saw the opportunity where it's kind of like, that's kind of an, an older model. Uh, the newer model that I look at is when you can combine thought leadership, which that's the area that I was in with really good SEO, really good PR, and you kind of combine, it's almost like a Venn diagram where each one is like PR, SEO, thought leadership. If you do really good thought leadership, then you can basically get really good PR influencer marketing and that can result in good SEO. And so that's where that company basically goes into a company and their whole thing is we are going to help you own your industry. We're going to help you own this. And like, we're like, and that's what I love about it is that I love, like, like I, I get excited about things that are like, they have a uh, really cool air, like things that they're doing, like a cool product or cool, cool service, um, good people. And then they're just like, man, if we just like took off in this industry, we would just kill it. And that's what we we love doing. And so I think that that's where my expertise. And if you have any questions around that, it's it's about how you can really differentiate your company, your brand to be that industry leader, to be the top of the food chain through digital, like just dominating on digital or when people are searching, your company just keeps coming up, whether it be your company site or in the press or anything, it's just demolishing that. I almost look at it as digital real estate. So we help people basically take over as much digital real estate as possible. I love it. Yeah. My, my friend, Mike Koenig says that it's all about having a category of one and that's exactly what it is. Like you guys create the space through thought leadership, through, you know, just creating content through SEO optimization, through just general PR uh, and, and refining the public relations and kind of pointing things in, in the right place so that a business or a brand can own their space. They can be the number one in their category. And you guys do it brilliantly. Um, and I love all the different assets that you've picked up, uh, some of which I know you're not able to disclose, but I love that you have so many of these media uh, assets and PR assets that you're able to aggregate and, you know, really help companies and help entrepreneurs, um, you know, get their brand out there and, and create an organization, create a presence for their organization. Yeah. And I think that like uh, pertaining to this and like when you're an investor, the, what you want to do, like, uh, like, for example, when I, 10 years ago, before I started Icon was this, and I tried to do a deal. Like, I remember, like, I walked into a deal with GE, and they looked at me, I didn't have a beard, I had to grow the beard out, so people took me seriously. Um, and, uh, but like, before I didn't have a beard, I walk in, I remember somebody said, look at, uh, they were like, Oh, look how young this kid is. And I overheard it. And I was just like, you're kidding me. I was like, and we all deal with different barriers. It could be because we're young. It could be because of uh, skin color, it could be sex. It could be, oh, I just don't know you. There's all these trust barriers that exist in the world today. And I think that, um, for me, um, what I tell, whether it's an entrepreneur or an investor, I'm like, and a lot of people who come to us are like, hey, we're doing you know, like for in the investment world, for example, it's a VC or a PE or somebody saying is that we want people to trust us when they do a deal with us. So what kind of branding would you recommend? And a lot of times I'm like, okay, here's what you do from a thought leadership side around your brand. It's kind of like what we talked about with you, uh, Donald, you've done a good job on doing something like the book's a good book. I like, you know, a lot of the things you've done. Um, and there, there's a lot of things around a brand that you can create and you can say, Hey, how can I get featured in these publications, get mentioned here? If you guys type in, like, for example, listeners, like type in keynote sales speakers into Google, see what shows up. It's an article in a site called marketing insider group. I show up as a top speaker there. If you type in books for CMOs, uh, you'll see an article that shows up in Forbes as a top search that has top of mind, my book in it. And so, and that's basically me hiring relevance to do that sort of thing for me. 
So um, for me, I like it because when I'm talking to CMO, they're like, oh, I've read your book. I'm like, yeah, because I basically hired this company to see digitally the online real estate. So you basically fell across my book and you're like, oh man, so are you, is there a higher chance that you're going to want to hire something or gonna do something or partner with me if you read my book? Yes. And so I think that for the things that um, retain, or related to this you know, podcast, I would say that you know, take a step back and think about as an investor or as an entrepreneur or as a, you know, somebody who wants to get into investing or has been in it, what, what would be good for my brand? So, I mean, simple things like creating content where you can, and I, and I like a hub and spoke model where you say, I want to own something. So I want to create a pillar piece of something I want to own. And then from there, I'm going to help it spread out and basically have a strategy of alignment across social channels, across press, across this. And that core part is that really solid pillar piece. Then you build another pillar piece. Then you build another pillar piece and you basically start owning certain things and keywords. Um, examples of that, like we go after some of the hardest pillar pieces out there. Uh, for example, Google Calendar. If you type in Google Calendar on the first page, you'll see a Google Calendar guide um, uh, under calendar.com. That is a search term that is virtually impossible on the internet. And we show up either, uh, sometimes we jump to page two, but most of the time we're in the top four or five position because we want to own things with Google Calendar because that's one of our integrations where we're, you know, we have a lot of users there. So we want to own that. And as hard as that sucker is, we still stay on that main page. So there's a lot of things you can do to basically say, hey, I want to own things either through, you know, having these pillar things or just like then there's or the perception of your brand you know, get on a list of top, you know, investors and have Peter, you know, whatever, Richard Branson on there and Justin Donald's on there. People are like, well, who the hell is Justin Donald? That's awesome for you because people know Richard Branson. They, they might not know Justin. So it's like you can do branding and tie it to, uh, you know, in ways and strategies so that people start being like, this is a person I should deal with. Or when they're stalking you to decide, you know, what we should do together, whether it's a partnership or whatever, it just screams credibility where they're like, I should absolutely deal with this company and this person. Yeah, that's awesome. What a great uh, way. I mean, you elaborated so well and you do so much unique work. Uh, you know, when I think about like you guys, you're a one-stop shop for creating content and visibility and like great articles. Uh, so I love what you're doing. Something else that I love though, is one of your superpowers, which we've just discussed, you're able to use that and partner with these companies that um, you've invested in or other companies that you're advising. I mean, one of the things you guys do a great job of is uh, getting advisory contracts and helping companies scale. And I'm really excited, you know, hot off the press. Uh, I, I don't even know if this is, you know, public info yet, but uh, I heard about the deal that uh, you guys are striking up with Tradeful and I'm so thrilled. That was, that was signed yesterday. Like, what are you, did you, did you bug my office? <laughs> I, I uh, you know, I, I tend to be uh, in the know on some things, but I'm just thrilled because that was, this was a strategic alliance that I was really excited about for the company. It's a company that I'm invested in that I think, you know, with, with specialized fulfillment and really it's, it's more of a solution type of a, a software that integrates with everything and, and it's incredible. And so when I have investment dollars in something, I'm always looking to, you know, protect that, you know, how do I de-risk this deal? Well, some of the way I de-risk it is by connecting them with uh, great customers and clients. Another way is by, you know, making sure that I'm talking positively about all the things that they do. Another thing I do is I like to connect them with experts like you guys and get you involved. Cause I know that, uh, when you take one plus one, uh, you, you can get three when you, you know, have the right superpowers and the right people involved. Yeah, we're going to make that one a four. It was going to be one plus one equals four, because I think that exactly like, I think you, um, that like that deal, I love how you looked at it because they're good people behind it. Um, you know, Eric and um, the people, every single call that I was on, I was like, man, I love these people. So it's like, you've got good people. You've got an opportunity in the, the industry. You've got um, people that are willing to deal. Like the, they're not unreasonable uh, people. They're very reasonable, smart people. And so I like it. Um, and, and for us, it's funny that, yeah, I didn't know if I was going to mention that. I was actually, I meant like on this, I was like, man, can I, can I say that, that we're dealing with, with them and I want to make sure. So I'm glad you, you, know, you mentioned it. But like for me, um, that one and the way that unfolded, I think is great because we like it exactly how, like, because we don't do that with everybody where we have a relationship like with a, 
uh, Justin Donald. It's like, we like you because you have really good investment criteria and you're smart about thinking. And I think you look at people and you look at the same values and the things that we look at, but you're, you're even just better. You're better at finding deals than we are. Um, but I think that like where that's where we see, a, a, I was going to tell you uh, separately, but I, I'll just bring it up now is that we see our model as a company uh, tying ourselves closer to people like you because exactly that company, company investors want to see their, their investments grow and skyrocket. And one of the things with growth is this kind of organic traffic, credibility, SEO, PR, um, cause it helps with getting more investment. It helps with recruiting. It helps with a lot of those things. So I think that honestly, one of our models moving forward for lead gen is to basically find the people who have great investment criteria, like you, uh, you know, partner and, and, and basically it's that kind of selfless giver mentality, just try and give to them as much as possible. And it's going to be this, this reciprocal deal. Next deal, like I know there will be something that we're working with a client. We're like, dude, they're growing. Let's get this on your radar, Justin. Run it through your investment criteria. Uh, and that's where I think that, you know, if for investors and for people listening, if there are investors that you do find a deal where you're like, man, if they only had some really good thought leadership, some PR, if we got like the, the leaders here out in the industry more, um, you know, those sort of questions, or we want to go after certain terms and that are competitive, like those are things we get involved in. And especially when it's someone who's a smart investor, it, it's great. Cause then we're like, I, I love it. Cause it's like, look, they put their money in and sometimes we'll put our money in, or we'll just put significant resources on that tradeful deal. Like the resources that we were putting towards it, there's only one other company that we have as much resources towards, um, you know? And so I think that that's where, um, and that's the one that we are very heavily invested in. So it's legitimately like, and I told them, it's like, you will be like our number two priority in a company, which is a big priority for a company like ours. Um, you know, and so I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity there, but I mean, I think that that just proves the model of, you know, when you kind of have networks of, and bring in the right. And I think I love your mentality of bringing in the best, uh, people, even you've done that when you've connected me previously, we were talking about uh, a vendor that you connected me to where you're like, Hey, like, I go with this person because they're really good at this. They're a good person and they're really good at what they do. And I think that if we're able to do that and have this kind of investor connections with each other, um, once again, it's not just we're going to make a ton of money together. We're going to make it in the right way with the right people. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very appreciative of you for that. And I, you know, value the friendship and relationship. Yeah, business is more fun when you do it with people. And it's more <laughs> fun when you can collaborate together. And when everyone wins, it's just... I mean, you're on cloud nine. It's cool. You know, it, of course, there are going to be some times that it doesn't work out. But the whole goal is, can you have it work out more times than it doesn't work out? And realistically, in most cases, you only need one deal to really work out to cover, you know, deals that don't yeah. work out. And, and that's kind of the cool way of looking at it. Um, I think you have made a lot of investors in the lifestyle investor mastermind happy with your partnership, uh, you know, and uh, just another layer of de-risking the deal and, uh, you know, being able to create awareness for what I think is um, really a revolutionary company that's going to scale and do incredible mm -hmm. things for some of the biggest brands and biggest retailers in the world, not just in the U.S., but in the world. And I mean, these are contracts that are being negotiated as we speak with some of the largest companies on planet earth. And uh, it's, it's just really exciting. Yeah, I, I love it. One of my favorite things about that also is that they're self-aware like it's funny as it is like with one of the, the investor and uh, well, I know the names involved, but I just don't know how much I can share. But like from, from a standpoint of the people involved, very successful entre uh, entrepreneur, multi exits, who's involved as an investor. And then you have uh, you have Eric, who's their C, you know, CEO, who basically, um, you know, you're on the phone with them and they are also very uh, and, and this is what I love about certain investments. They're aware of what they need. And, but they're also aware of what they're good at and the service. So it's like, they know they're really good at it. It's kind of what you talked about. There's super opportunity in our area specifically. They were like, gosh, we really could use some. And I love that. Like, I love that about people when they're transparent on their need. I think that's one of the most attractive things in the deal to me is that I just don't, I'm fine with you guys not being perfect. I'm fine. With, that's actually like, if we just know ultimately what 
you know, your hole is, we can plug that baby and we can just get rolling because like no investment has a perfect deal. I mean, like I had to jump into the GC for this damn real estate thing where I'm, (laughs) you know, out here yelling at contractors. I didn't plan on doing that. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, those are the things where dealing with people who are very self-aware of their uh, needs and challenges. I think those are the type of people I love dealing with because I'm going to have needs. I'm going to have challenges. And and I think that, you know, we all have them in different ways. And if we can communicate them well, then people can truly help us. And that's why, you know, when people are like, you know, and that's why, like, when you connect me, I'll just say his name with Will Duffy, like, you know, you know, it's like we had a need there. We had a challenge there. And I'm very well aware that we need somebody that has an expertise there. So when you connect me to people like that, I don't care. I mean, you could be making some crazy side hustle money. I don't care. You're solving a problem for me and you, you have a network that you've worked your ass off to do. And so that's where like, I love being around people that are really good at connecting those dots, because if we just keep connecting the dots with each other, we're going to be extremely successful. And so when anything PR, thought leadership, SEO, earned media comes up, you know, I'm happy any of the people, if, they, if people listening, reach out, just say, hey, I'm a connection to Justin Donald or, you know, I'm a whatever, like I will make time. Justin's a, he's somebody I really respect in the industry. And so, you know, if you do reach out via LinkedIn or whatever, uh, you know, I will respond, especially if you kind of uh, make it a point to say, hey, I'm a part of the, po- I, even if it's like, hey, where do I get that Dunder Mifflin shirt? I don't care. I'll, I'll respond and help you out. I love it. And you're, you're so giving in that uh, capacity and in that matter. And I, I appreciate that so much. And I tell people this all the time. The goal isn't to have the largest slice of a small company. The goal is to have a bunch of small slices of companies that have the ability to really scale. And so I'm all about creating win-wins. I want everyone to do well. You know, when I'm investing, I don't want to be so cutthroat that one party doesn't reap the rewards. Everyone should reap the rewards. Everyone should win. And when everyone wins uh, and y- your, your expectations and your values are in alignment, you know, that's when the magic happens. So uh, I'm thrilled about having you on the show. This has just been chock full of tons of great content. Uh, where can our audience, our listeners, our viewers find you, John? Uh, I mean, for, I would say that uh, really, I mean, uh, LinkedIn is one where if you just reach out to me and say, hey, I wanted to connect, saw you on the uh, Lifestyle Investor podcast, uh, you know, uh, that's an easy way if you just comment and say, like, now, if you just want to connect, that's great. If you have a question um, in particular, I mean, if you have something specific related to kind of PR, SEO, that branding realm, uh, my email is at j at relevance.com. So it's just the letter j at relevance.com. Uh, if there, if it's calendar related or something pro- productivity, it's just uh, J the letter J at calendar.com. So you can kind of guess, um, on things I'm involved in. I'm pretty lazy with my email addresses. Um, so, and then, but I would just say if it's just a general, like, Hey, can let's connect on LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn newsletter, um, you know, that I write every uh, week and I write for Forbes. I write for Inc. Uh, weekly. I write, uh, for CNBC fast company and, um, uh, HBR kind of quarterly or every six months or so. Um, I write for Life Act monthly and then, um, but a lot of them just kind of uh, aggregate a lot of times into LinkedIn, some I put on there, but I'd say that um, don't be shy. If I can be helpful uh, in those areas, just reach out to those kind of company emails. If it's just you want to follow, I would just follow on LinkedIn um, just because that's where uh, a lot of my kind of uh, newsletter information goes out to. Well, we've got a lot of entrepreneurs that are part of the lifestyle investor audience and community. So um, you as a resource for them and for their businesses and what they're looking to do is just incredible. And then it's really fun because it sounds like you write for everything. And then your partner, John Rampton, he writes for all the stuff you don't (laughs) write for. So I mean, between the two of you, you're a one-stop shop. It's awesome. It's like 30 different publications we write when you combine the two of us. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're, but we have a kind that's what we should be good at what we do. Like, you know, we, we talk about, Hey guys, you should be doing this. Uh, we should, it's like, kind of like the person who designs websites. It, well, it's kind of like you being a crappy investor. You're a good investor and you help other investors. It makes sense to me. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, I would say that, you know, if there's, especially if there's somebody you think I can help, like, even if it's a company you've invested in in the past and you're like, man, this is what they needed. Uh, I'm happy to even just jump on. Like, I don't need to sell them or connect them to people. I, I'm kind of a little, I, I'm more advisory role in reality. And so I would connect them. But uh, if it's something important to someone, you know, reach out to me and say, hey, 
I really think you could help this company because that's also like that drives me these days. If I can send, if I can get on a call that's 20, 30 minutes and briefly tell an entrepreneur, hey, you should really be doing this. Here's this. You could say, yeah, I mean, here, like, I'll be as honest as I can because sometimes, like, you know, companies only need certain things. Like, I just talked to a friend who's like, I'm like, hey, you should not spend that much in this realm because you're doing really great already. And you have this lead channel, this, let's focus on that. We can do some PR that's very limited that can help you with this conversion here. But let's get this here optimal. Then let's move on to the PR strategy. So I want you to call me in six months. And I think it caught him off guard because he was ready to like sign a contract. And I was like, no, like I'll advise you in a way because ultimately I, I try to have trust currency because if you tell, if you advise somebody in the right way, even if it doesn't benefit you immediately, it always comes back. And so I would definitely, um, you know, if there's somebody listening that you think I can be helpful to an entrepreneur that's growing or an investor uh, that is, you know, investing a significant amount in something that, that you know, this can be helpful, just connect with me and I'll point them in the right direction um, or at least give them some advice. I love it. Well, thank you for the time. And I'll wrap today up the way I always do. And that is take some action, take action towards the life of your dreams, towards financial freedom, towards a life on your terms. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.